Hello, my name is Tolan Kister. I'm an environmental educator working for Hudson River Park. For those of you that don't know, Hudson River Park is home to over 70 different species of fish. Hudson River Park staff work really hard to study these different species and also teach the public about these amazing animals. Today, I'm excited to take a really close look at one of my favorite species of fish, the oyster toadfish. Toadfishes are described as heavy-bodied fishes with broad, flattened heads and large mouths equipped with strong teeth. They grow to a maximum length of about 40 centimeters long, and they are either scaleless or have very small scales depending on the species. The oyster toadfish, for example, has no scales at all. Lastly, most toadfish can produce an audible grunting or croaking sound, which is part of where they get their name, toadfish. Um, they normally do this if they are distressed above the water, uh, but most of the time they actually use it to attract mates underwater, and we're going to take a really close look at that later on. On this slide, we're going to take a look at the anatomy of an oyster toadfish. Anatomy is the science that deals with the bodily structure of different living things. By understanding the anatomy of a toadfish or any other type of organism, we can gain insight into how that living thing has adapted to the environment around it. We're going to start out by looking at the fins of the oyster toadfish. At the back, we have the caudal fin, which oyster toadfish and other fish use to move themselves through the water. We have the anal fin and the ventral fin, which help to provide stability for the oyster toadfish. The pectoral fins help them to turn in the water so they can move left and right. And lastly, we have the dorsal fin, which also provides stability while moving in the water, but also provides protection because of the spikes that are hidden in the first dorsal fin. As you can see, the first dorsal fin is spiky, and the second one is made up of soft rays. Other anatomical features about the oyster toadfish that we would want to talk about include the cirri. The cirri refer to these things growing out of the oyster toadfish's face and head. These cirri help them to blend in with plants and other things in their environment so that they can remain hidden. One thing that we can't see on this chart is the toadfish's swim bladder. The swim bladder is used in most fish species to move up and down in the water by filling up and deflating with air, but in toadfish they use it to create a croaking sound to attract mates. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the oyster toadfish's mouth. The oyster toadfish's mouth is very large for their body size, which allows them to eat relatively larger prey items, and also allows them to crush through tough shells, which a lot of their prey species have. On this slide, before we move on, I just wanted to bring attention to a couple of other species of toadfish, specifically the coral toadfish, the white-spotted toadfish, and the leopard toadfish. We can see that these toadfishes share a lot in common with the oyster toadfish, but we can also see that they have some different colors and features. For example, the coral toadfish and the white spotted to toadfish have wildly different colors, and they also feature uh, different cirri on their face. This is, these differences are all because these species live in different environments than the oyster toadfish, and they have had to camouflage to match these environments and survive in these different areas. As for habitat, oyster toadfish can be found in coastal areas from Florida to Maine. In these areas, toadfish like to inhabit the benthic zone, or the area found on the bottom of the river. In these areas, toadfish look for holes, cracks, crevices, and other structures like oyster reefs to find places to hide. These hiding places allow them to avoid their predators and hide from their prey, uh, as well as serve as nesting sites once those toadfish reach maturity. We can see in these pictures all of these toadfish are occupying the bottom areas of their tanks and we can see that a lot of them have actually snuggled in to different spots where they can uh, wait for food to come by but also protect themselves from predators that might be trying to eat them. Here on our pile poster we can also see a representation of an oyster toadfish hiding in a broken log which is exactly what they would do in the wild. Now we're going to start talking a little bit about the toadfish's diet. Toadfishes are carnivores, and they are aggressive ambush predators. When we say the word ambush predator, it means an animal that lies in wait and in hiding for another animal to come by, and then the ambush predator will jump out and surprise that animal and try to eat it. Great examples of ambush predators include alligators and crocodiles, as well as trapdoor spiders. Toadfish are also ambush predators. They will eat a wide variety of prey, and we can see some pictures of the things they like to eat here on this slide. Generally speaking, if a toadfish can fit 
the animal into its mouth, it's something that the toadfish might try to eat. This can include things like blue crabs, uh, which are a crustacean species. We also have Atlantic silversides, which are a small fish species. We've actually seen toadfish in our tanks trying to eat silversides that they're living with. We also see oysters. Toadfish are famous for being able to eat strong uh, shelled animals like oysters. And the reason they're able to eat these species is because toadfish have such strong jaw muscles and teeth that they can easily crunch through hard shells like an oyster shell. And we can also see small crustaceans like isopods, um, their diet would also include things like shrimps, and as I said, pretty much anything they can fit into their mouths is on the menu for an oyster toadfish. One thing I'll also say is, speaking from experience, you definitely do not want to be bitten by an oyster toadfish because they have such a strong bite that it can actually really, really hurt. Now, on the flip side, we're going to talk about some animals that might become potential predators of oyster toadfish in their environments. Some of these images might be a bit surprising. For example, we just talked about the blue crab on the previous slide as an animal that toadfish like to eat. Blue crabs are fairly aggressive predators, just like oyster toadfish. And when a blue crab and a toadfish encounter each other in the wild, there could be a couple of different outcomes depending on the size of these animals. If the toadfish is bigger than the blue crab, then it's likely that the toadfish might eat the blue crab. Whereas if it's the opposite and the blue crab is much larger than the toadfish, that blue crab might be able to catch the toadfish and actually eat it. So it really just depends on what size the different animals are when they encounter each other. Another surprising picture we can see is that toadfish are edible for humans, and we know through archaeological evidence that toadfish have been eaten by uh, the Lenape, who were settled along the shorelines of the Hudson River hundreds of years ago. Here in the middle, we can actually see a very surprising image, which is actually a toadfish eating another toadfish. You can see the tail of the smaller toadfish coming out of its mouth, and toadfish will eat each other depending on the size they are when they meet each other. Uh, same thing as with toadfish and blue crabs. If a toadfish is much larger than another toadfish and it can catch the other toadfish, then it very well might try to eat it. Other predators include this bird on the top right hand side over here, which is called a double crested cormorant. Double crested cormorants are diving birds, and they will actually dive down into the water to catch the fish that they want to eat. This one has caught a white perch, but I have oftentimes seen cormorants catching and eating toadfish at the surface. And lastly, we can see larger fish species like this black tip reef shark are also potential predators of oyster toadfish. Part of the reason toadfish like to hide out in these uh, cracks and crevices and areas where it's easy to hide is because of predators like the double crested cormorant and the black tip reef shark. If these animals can't reach them, then the toadfish is safe. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the toadfish's life cycle. Toadfish begin their lives as eggs, which are guarded by their parents, specifically by male toadfish, until they hatch. When they hatch, we can see following the arrow over here, they hatch into what we call a yolk sac larva. A yolk sac larva is basically a larval fish that has a yolk sac attached to it. This yolk sac may look a little bit awkward when it comes to swimming, but it's actually an important source of food early on in the toadfish's life. During the time period that they are a yolk sac larva, they will actually still be protected by their parent. So even though they aren't able to swim super fast, they still have a degree of protection from predators around them. As they grow, their yolk sac will slowly, slowly decrease in size, and they will start looking a little bit more like an adult toadfish, even though they're very small. Here we can see an adolescent toadfish being held in the hands of one of our staff members. And even though it's very small, this adolescent toadfish is actually very close in appearance to what an adult toadfish looks like, minus the size. Next, we're going to move over here to the bottom left, where we can see an example of an adult, an adult toadfish and what an adult toadfish would be trying to do. Once toadfishes are adults, they're going to try to find a place that would be an appropriate nest site. Once a male has found an appropriate nest, what they're going to do is they're going to croak and try to attract females to this nest site so that the females can lay eggs that the male can then fertilize. Once a male has successfully attracted a female and fertilized these eggs, we actually start the whole cycle over again with that male toadfish guarding his offspring until they hatch into these yolk sac juveniles. 
And that is basically the life cycle of an oyster toadfish. One of the really interesting things about it is the fact that the parents put in so much time to protect and take care of their eggs. This is something that is not normally seen in a fish species, and it is something that helps these toadfish uh, gain an advantage in the early stages of their life. Just to continue from the previous slide discussing life cycle, I wanted to show you guys how much growing a toadfish does between its adolescence and its adult stage. Uh, adolescent toadfish, as you can see here, are fairly small. The individuals we see here are two centimeters, maybe two and a half centimeters long. However, adults have a lot more body mass to them as well as body length. The individual that we see being measured here is about 25 centimeters long, and that's not even the biggest that these fish can get. Oyster toadfish are able to grow to a maximum length of about 40 centimeters at their very, very longest, and that also involves a lot more uh, growth in their width and their mass as well. So even though they're not the longest fish, these fish do get fairly large. One of the most fascinating things about the toadfish's life cycle is how they find mates in their environments. The environments that toadfish live in, as we discussed, are on the bottoms of bodies of water in places like Hudson River Estuary, and these environments can be very dark, and it might not be easy to see mates or sense them in other ways. So toadfish have come up with a solution to attract mates, and the way they do that is by croaking. Toadfish croaks are loud. Uh, we're actually going to listen to a recording of what a toadfish croak sounds like, and I just want to let you know that this is what the toadfish's croak sounds like underwater. And for an underwater noise, it's pretty loud. So, one of the really cool things about that is when a male toadfish starts croaking, because it's so loud, it has the potential to attract females from a pretty wide area of the water. Divers that have gone diving in places where oyster toadfish live during the times of year that they reproduce, usually in the spring and summer, uh, have noted that they are able to hear these croaks from pretty far away from the toadfish, which just goes to show how well adapted they are to make that croaking sound. In this slide, we're going to watch a quick video that shows the nesting behavior of these oyster toadfish. As you can see, the eggs are these yellow dots that are actually stuck to the glass of the aquarium. And one thing that we can see throughout the video is that the parent toadfish are sitting right on top of the eggs. And these toadfish are doing what they can to try to protect the eggs in the tank. Of course, they are sharing a tank with other oyster toadfish, which is making this a little bit of a difficult task, but this is a great representation of what these toadfish would do to guard their nests in the wild. They would sit on top of or in front of their eggs, and they would use their really big face, their really large mouth and teeth to try to defend it from predators. Part of the reason that we know so much about oyster toadfish and other fish species in Hudson River Park is because of a fish ecology survey that began in 1986 in Lower Hudson River Park, where scientists from the River Project, a marine science field station, suspended traps in the Lower Hudson River to sample for local species. Over the course of the study, scientists at the River Project discovered an incredible amount of biodiversity in the Lower Hudson River area. In recent years, Oyster toadfish are by far the most common species that are caught as part of this survey. As we can see in the chart here on the right hand side, produced from results from this survey from 2006 to 2019, between those years, oyster toadfish, represented by this large brown section labeled O tau, or Opsinus tau, their scientific name, toadfish made up more than half of the fish that were caught by staff scientists between 2006 and 2019, showing that they are incredibly populous in this area. Other research that is conducted on toadfish in Hudson River Park. Uh, because we catch so many toadfish in this area, we are working to better understand them in a lot of different ways. One study that we carry out in-house is a study looking into toadfish BMI, or body mass index. This study 
involves collecting measurements such as length and weight, which we can see one of our interns doing in these photos right over here. And by collecting information like this, we can better understand how these fish grow throughout their lives. Another research project that's being conducted on oyster toadfish in the area is being run by Brooklyn College, and it involves looking at oyster toadfish vocalizations. And they are specifically looking at the effect of noise pollution on the ability for toadfish to successfully vocalize. Part of the reason they're looking at that is because, as we know, toadfish need to make sounds in order to attract mates in their environment. And boat noise and other things that get in the way of making those sounds is something that could potentially negatively affect them. And with that, we're going to conclude our species spotlight on the oyster toadfish. I want to thank everybody for joining us to learn a little bit more about this species of fish. For more information on wildlife in Hudson River Park, as well as weekly STEM activities and other educational materials, please visit HudsonRiverPark.org. And also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Hudson River Park. Thank you again for joining us, and I hope you guys have a great day.